Welcome to the Startup of the Year podcast, where each episode we showcase exciting new companies from around the world. This podcast is produced by Established, creators of the Startup of the Year program. Established is focused on helping organizations with their innovation, startup, and communication strategies. Welcome to the Startup of the Year podcast. I'm Frank Gruber, and on this episode, we'll hear some highlights from our virtual office hours, where we answered questions from startups from our community. The office hours were, were hosted by Rich Malloy from our team and also included commentary from myself and Jen Consalvo, our co-CEO and, and my co-founder of Established. Uh, we plan on doing more of these virtual office, office hours in the future, and we hope that you find it useful and uh, hopefully you can get your questions answered. So keep a lookout for upcoming events as we look to you know, look forward to continue to offer startup opportunities out there. Uh, and like I said, continue to offer support for companies. On another note, though, we've got another upcoming event. It'll be coming up our special Start of the Year virtual pitch competition coming up on May 28th. It'll be focused on and celebrating female founders. So we'll have five startups, all female founded, uh, pitch their innovations to a panel ex- of experts, as well as um, some our global community. And you can tune in to watch that. And then the uh, They'll have some time to, to do some Q&A with a, that expert set of judges, which are mostly VCs um, and innovators. And the winner of that will actually get a fast-track spot to our 8th annual summit, which will also be done virtually. At that summit, we'll have our top 100 semifinalists, and they'll all be pitching for a chance at $20,000 in potential investment from established ventures, as well as the opportunity for curated connections, additional exposure, and there'll just be a lot of great people and investors uh, available to to connect with. So I think it's a great opportunity for any startup that's early stage looking to, to make connections, especially in this interesting time in history. So be ready for that. That'll be coming out in the fall. But in order to get there, uh, these female founders will be pitching for a chance at one of those spots. Okay, so let's kick it over to our virtual office hours. We've got Rich Malloy. He's going to kick it over with some questions, and uh, we'll hear what startups are looking for, and hopefully uh, you learn something along the way as well. Thanks, everybody, for, um, for joining. Who can we, uh, who's, who, who's up? What questions do you have? Last time you had a talk um, uh, that we heard, you had some really, really good points on mental health um, for founders. I, I wanted to know if you had anything to say on mental health for founders during times where we have to be stuck inside. Um, so you had mentioned in the past, just making sure you're getting enough physical activity, um, making sure you're kind of following your own circadian rhythm. Um, so getting enough sleep at night, um, what would you say right now in terms of keeping connected, um, staying on the ball, uh, for us founders? I guess I'd I'd offer three, three thoughts that are top of mind for me. Number one is self-awareness, um, this morning I drank a lot of caffeine and I could just feel I was all jittery and anxious. And so I just kept checking in with myself. Okay. That's, you know, uh, I'm, I'm feeling anxious. I had too much caffeine. Uh, and you know, how is that going to affect my, my, my mental state? Right. And so that had just having a little bit of self-awareness, check in, pause, take 10 breaths. How are you feeling? What's going on for you right now? Um, so that is number one. Number, uh, the, the second thing that, that I'm, uh, that I need to be doing that I'm not doing right now is actually reaching out uh, to friends and loved ones just to check in on them. Uh, And that simple act of giving kindness, I think offers a lot to, to, to use it as a person to, to feel that connection and to to build that connection. Um, And then the third thing is, is, you know, uh, one of, one of my favorites is the, um, you know, a lesson I learned from a very special episode of Fresh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh, and that is that, um, you know, ask for help. Um, you know, you're not alone mm-hmm. that we're, you know, people, everybody, everybody got to where they are by, um, you know, having support and getting help and that, whether that, um, whether that help comes from a coach, a therapist, a best friend, a partner, all of the above, um, you know, those are, those are the things that I think that we, that those are all very internal looking things, I think, to check in with yourself. Um, and, uh, yeah. And Frank, um, would love to get your perspective, you and Jenna, you know, you, you have a lot of great perspectives on this as well. Great question. It's, this is a really tough time for everyone. I think not just, you know, startup founders, but just everyone is, you know, you know, I hate saying the word unprecedented, but it is unprecedented for us all to be inside this amount of time and not being able to do what we want to do. And, uh, I think I feel like it's the American way for us all to want to have our freedom and, you know, hmm. you know, go out and, and do whatever. So, um, but 
taking a, back a step, um, you know, there's a few things that, that I try to do regularly, and I think I've seen others do similar. It's, um, you know, making sure that you have your daily routine, that you're continually getting your the same amount of exercise. And I know we still can't do, you can't go to the gym right now. You can't um, maybe do the same things that you're normally used to doing, but there are some great apps for doing like in, in home kind of thing. So, um, you know, there's seven minute workouts and there's meditations online that you can do um, uh, as well as yoga online. So like um, Adrian, yoga with Adrian is a great one. She's, if you go to YouTube and you search that, she's got a ton of different yoga things you can do to kind of de-stress. Um, you, you can get like the, the eight fit app and start doing those kinds of things, but creating that ability to get, get, get rid of some of that um, extra stress hormone that you're producing constantly because um, mm -hmm. we're not getting enough exercise probably and probably not getting enough movement um, like we're used to. So I think that's really important for, um, you know, especially in this time, um, I, I actually agree with, with Rich on the things he said as well, but I think that's a big one. Um, sleep is another one. Like it's underestimated the importance of sleep, right? Like we, we are now, you know, stuck inside. And so what, what, you know, what you really want to do is maybe Netflix and chill or just Netflix um, and just hang out and just watch like binge watch things. Well, that's going to bring you up until one in the morning and uh, coupled with maybe looking at your device for every single coronavirus update. So don't do that. Try to unplug, try to set a set time that you want to go to sleep and, um, you know, and, and make sure that you're getting enough of it. Because in times like this, you probably aren't because there's things that are happening that are like internal that you, you need to process and probably um, you're going to need more time um, to, to regroup. And so I think those are a couple things, um, you know, trying to maintain those the sleep habits, the routines and getting the extra uh, exercise um, is, is, is important. So I think Jen, Jen may have some too. I didn't, I don't want to steal all the, the thunder. We talk about this a lot, so I don't want to, I don't want to take all the answers here, but Jen, yeah, you I'd love to, yep. Would love to. Um, so Frank and I, uh, as many people know, we, we, uh, we're not only co-founders and co-CEOs, but we're married. And, uh, and one of the things that we used to do, we've, we've been, you know, even before this, which again is unprecedented, we've been through, very, very tough challenges in the past. And one of the things that we used to do was just every once in a while, just look when, when someone you can tell, like the other one is like really stressed and, you know, everything's going wrong and, you know, we're in a bad place, you know, it, just pointing to them and saying, quick, give me 10 things right now that you are thankful for, or that is going right. Name it. I don't care what it is. Just name me 10 things. And I think you know, again, like Frank said, sleep is underestimated. I think that is a tool that's, it's a really important tool in our toolbox, you know, to always just be looking at what is going right. What do we have? What can we rely on right now? So that we're not, because it's our, our, you know, our, our human minds just go straight for all the disaster, right? We start spinning and cycling like, oh, what, what are all the things that could go wrong? Well, what are all the things, what are the gifts? What are the things going right right now? You know, and what are the and then celebrate Sometimes, those? <laughs> yes, yeah, celebrate them, and then think about because you know I was just doing this yesterday. Like once you can get in that frame, like just keep going, right? If you can name ten, name twenty, write them all down. Think about them because what that does it is it sort of opens up this entire field of possibility, and it brings new things to mind that you might never have thought of, new opportunities, new ideas. Um, and that's a space that we all, I think, need to be in right now, because as someone else was talking about earlier, you know, are, are there opportunities? Yes, there are. There are always, always opportunities, no matter what's going on in the world. So, you know, if you can get into that positive headspace at least once a day, you know, try to do it in the morning if you can, or whenever you're just starting to feel down, just, just make that a go-to tool and, um, and you'll be surprised what can come of that. Uh, Jackie had a good, good Good question here. Um, how would, any advice on maintaining relationships with startup investors during tough economic times? Communicate, 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 and then communicate some more. And if you're communicating, then you're then you still have some more communication to do. But you know those you should already you should already have a monthly update that you send out to your investors. You should have already sent them what your COVID plans are. You should send your investors what your current runway is. You should send your investors. You should you know have a plan for. Um, 
what happens if we can't, if we, if our revenue goes flat, what happens if our revenue goes negative, you know, or, or sorry, our revenue growth goes negative, if we start losing customers, how are we going to manage that? What's the, what's the plan for, for laying off the team? Have you already had a conversation with everybody on your team about, about salaries? Could they take a pay cut? Would they be willing to take a pay cut for more equity? Could, could they go, could you, could you, could they go with no pay? Uh, depending on how, how big or small your team is, right? But, um, have those plans, have those hard conversations and present those plans and can, and communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, so, uh, let's see here. You were, you were talking about, um, culture and the importance of being transparent. Um, I wanted to know if you had anything to say on the actual line that should be drawn in terms of transparency, um, with our startup, uh, Camelot. We, we actually, um, an interesting lesson that I had to learn was you don't want to kind of communicate absolutely every piece of data that comes in the door um, because sometimes, you know, you can communicate data and then the data was false, um, you know, um, uh, you know, things, things turn around and they cause a lot of confusion. Um, same thing with salaries. Um, I know Steve Jobs is famous at Next for um, you kind of being very, very, very transparent. Everybody knew what everyone's salaries were. Um, I wanted to know in terms of culture, maintaining a really positive culture, do you guys have any lines to draw um, where you shouldn't be necessarily transparent about every piece of data in the company? Mm. Frank? <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, it's, it's a good one. You've seen companies like Buffer, for example. I don't know if you're familiar with Buffer, their online social platform. Uh, for sharing, you know, social updates and analytics, they are, you know, over the top transparent, um, where they they share all their company salaries online. They come, you know, they put everything out there. So I think it's really a gut check for yourself, like what, where, and, and what you want your culture to be, you know. So I think they decided we want to be 100% transparent. Well, there, you know, there's pluses and minuses to that, right? Everything's out there; it's all out there, and um, everyone can see everything. So you. You know, I think going into it, they know that and they're comfortable with that. If you're not comfortable with that, then don't do that. You know, figure out what what level are you, where where on the scale of comfort are you with putting it all out there? Um, and I think some of the things you need you, you can you can kind of uh, get to is that you know that where you could have points of contention and end up being around um, employee information. Like there's there's actual information. Um, that you can't share publicly, right, with different people. So you need mm -hmm. to kind of make sure you're not doing right, anything that's, right. that's against the law um, because you don't want to get in trouble. And that should remind us, Rich, we should mention that we we have a simple, like, this is our, you know, this, this disclaimer is this is just uh, helpful information. Things like this, you should definitely consult accountants and lawyers and other folks that are are, are certified 100% to, to answer these questions. But this is just from our experiences. So just want to just, you know, put that little asterisk there uh, nice. for, for you. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I mean, I think it's really what you're comfortable with. We, you know, we don't share all of our team information with everyone on our team all the time. And I think that's, that's the big one where, you know, you got to be careful. Um, you know, there's areas around um, health related information that you can't share. Um, you know, in this day and age, um, things are becoming more and more um, sensitive. And so I think, um, yeah, I think it just depends on where you're at and what, where you, you, know, you got to check it. Yep. You also need to know who your companies are. I mean, your clients are, right? So it depends on the type of business you are. Like if you have clients, you may not be able to share certain information. Um, if you That's do true. work for the government, you may not be able to share certain information. Um, right. You know, right. if you're a tech startup. Then and why, Jen? Because of security, right? And what else? There, There's all kinds of, I mean, it, you yeah. need to look at your contracts. There might be right. privacy. There may be, you know, if you do a contract with a, a you know, a, a fortune 500 company, they may not want you to share certain information right. with your entire company. You know, you just have to, you have to know your mm -hmm. team, you have to know your business, you have to know your clients. Um, think about all of those different aspects. Maybe, you know, if that's the case and you won't want to share everything, there's just certain pieces. Like maybe you do want to share, um, you know, certain expenses and how your team members all play into these expenses within your company because you want people to be able to see that and to be accountable and, uh, or you want to share, um, you know, certain metrics. I know some companies are more open to that than others. Uh, if you want to be super transparent about certain metrics that you think could drive, um, you know, again, accountability or excitement, you know, what is the purpose behind wanting to be transparent? So just 
think through all those things. Why do you want to do it? Who would be involved? Who could be hurt by it? Who would be motivated by it? Yep. Um, and especially if you haven't, if you've already started the company, and there's already people just know that if you, if you do move in that direction and you decide to make everything transparent, you know, Frank mentioned buffer. I'm pretty sure, uh, I can't remember the founder's name, but we had a conversation about it once. And he told me that when they made that switch, there was some fallout initially. Um, so, you know, you have mm -hmm. to commit and decide like, and make a decision that, okay, you know, some people may not be able to live this way. Um, and, you know, and understand that there could be people who, who can't live that way and leave. The last question was from, um, uh, uh, uh um, and I apologize, if, Sharia Sharma, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your, your first name. Hopefully I got, got close there. Um, but the um, uh, uh, question was, um, are there any mistakes or missteps that young startups generally make that can prove detrimental to their growth or harmful in the long run? And I, I actually have a long list on this. This is one of my favorite talks to give is pitfalls for startups to avoid. Um, and so I'll highlight, I'll, I'll bullet point some of the, some of the major things right now. So the first is, that um, is writing code first uh, is a major pitfall that you need to understand. You need to do customer discovery. You need to understand who your who your customer is. You need to know uh, what their problems are and how you're going to solve their problems. And you need to validate that. And then you need to continually do that customer discovery. So the worst thing you can do is write code first. You actually have to, have to truly understand your customers and, and those problems first. Um, the next is, is, is uh, at, um, that not having founder agreements in writing and even just the simplest, simplest founder agreement of like, I agree you 50% and I have 50% and that's that, right? Does not have to be a formal legal document, but just get your founder agreements in writing. I've seen this sync startups in the most horrible and spectacular fashion. Um, so get out there and do that. Uh, the next is that you should be incorporated. I don't know what the laws are in, in India, in America. Um, incorporation as an LLC is very simple. If you want to raise venture capital, you do need to be a C Corp, but you don't need to be a C Corp yet. Uh, you can just form as an LLC with the caveat that when you uh, do raise venture capital, you'll be a, you'll be a C Corp. Um, another is, um, uh, um, oh man, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, so, so the last one and the most heartbreaking one that I see is the founders that, that, um, uh, double that mortgage their house that sell their house even to to get capital to start out to take out personal loans that max out their credit cards and like that is it's there's you it's it's one thing to have great dedication like to such a massive extent that you're willing to put your financial self online you know on, on the line but um i just hate to see founders put themselves in in financial duress and in terrible financial situations because they sold their house, mortgaged their house, took out a second, took out a loan, took out a personal loan, whatever the case may be in order to fund their startup. And oftentimes, unfortunately, the founders that I see that are doing that are the ones that are paying for development before they've really truly done their customer discovery. So those would be the major uh, pitfalls that I would, um, uh, that I would suggest that you all avoid. Um, and with that, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, we've gone a, a few minutes over. Uh, thanks for, for hanging out with us for this first session. I mean, this is the first that we're trying out office hours. Um, I've got some ideas for how we can improve this uh, for the next time. Uh, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, and um, uh, subscribe to our weekly newsletter. If you haven't already, go to Startup of Year or Startup of Year, but startupofyear.com and uh, you know, sign up for our newsletter for more updates. So once again, thank you, everybody, for joining. And uh, be well, stay, stay safe, stay healthy, um, and uh, good luck. Thanks so much, Rich, and to all of our startups and participants. Thank you, Jen Consalvo, for joining as well. This has been an online virtual office hours. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. And we hope to do this more of this kind of uh, event for you so you can get your questions answered. Um, that's a wrap on this episode of the Startup of Your Podcast. Be on the lookout for additional opportunities like this at startupofyear.com or startupofyear.com. Thank you so much for joining us. And everyone out there, please keep safe and remember to keep starting up. Thanks for listening to the Startup of the Year podcast. Be sure to subscribe and we'll be back with another episode soon.